Okay, quick little FYI before we begin. In between videos, Windows did an automatic shutdown and apparently Unity did not close down correctly because the application no longer wanted to work correctly. So even though all the assets were there, no errors were generated, nothing was missing, all the scripts were there, it just didn't want to run right. So I just took a couple of minutes to recreate the uh, application. Um, all the script was already, already written, so all I did is just drag and drop it from one folder to another, no big deal. Uh, but if you see things lined up slightly differently and if things look slightly different, it is. Now the coding should be identical because like I said, I just dragged and dropped all the assets, including the code, into the new project. So where were we? Well, we have the text at the top say what the uh, intended object is. When you click on the corresponding object, it says correct. Then when you click on next, it changes. So the text changes and the corresponding uh, images change, but this doesn't change and that's where we left it. So what we need is a new variable saying, okay, go ahead and clear that. So how are we gonna do that? Well, when you click on the next text, all it's doing is this. Let me zoom in a little. All it's doing is it's changing this one variable. So what we can do is we can just create a new variable and have that change too. So game flow is where we're storing the static variables. Game flow is what's attached to the GM object. And we're just going to go ahead and add another static variable. So let's call this public static. Again, a string. We'll call this clear text. And it starts off as n. Since it's a static variable, we now can access this anywhere in the application. So we go back to QuestCon. And again, since it's declared in GameFlow, we have to designate that. So GameFlow dot, and there it is right at the top, clear text. And it's going to get set also to Y for yes. And now we go back to GameFlow. So sorry for jumping back and forth, but that's really... To explain the logic, I kind of have to go back and forth. So now in GameFlow, we have this late update. And again, my apologies for my mistake where I invented after update, which does not exist. And now we're just going to check for that value. So if this is set to Y, then we're going to go ahead and reset this. As a quick recap, SysText object is the transform variable that is linked to the uh, system message text. And so when we preface a statement with this variable, we're saying modify this variable, thereby modifying this object. So again, we're saying system text object, get component text mesh, and then we're changing the actual message. So we're just gonna set it to a blank. And then we just have to check for the condition and in this case it's that new variable so clear text so if clear text is equal to y put in the squiggly brackets so if that new variable clear text is set to y and it gets set to y when you click on the uh, next text object so if it's been set to Y, then go ahead and change this to a blank. But we need, a, need now, we need to now reset this value or else it'll just keep clearing it. So we also do clear text equals N. And that should do it. So it says click on safe, I click on safe, it says correct, I click on next, it clears and it resets, I click on cupcake, and there we go. So, as I said at the end of the last video, we would take care of that in this one. So a little bit of housekeeping there, and now we can start adding new functionality. So someone said that they wanted to see scoring, which was the intention to do that. So basically, you're going to create yet another variable, and it's you're just going to increment it. So whether you want it to be 1, 2, 3, 10, 20, 30, uh, maybe you're going to make this more complex and uh, different questions have different weights. 
you can certainly do that eventually, but you need to start somewhere. It's easier to start with something simple and uh, build on it rather than trying to jump into something really complex and maybe not have it work in the first place. Although even when you start with something simple, you still want it to be scalable. So I just want to mention that. So how do we do that? Well, again, game flows we're creating a static variables. So public static and we'll call this uh, well it'll be an int so it's a number so total score equals zero and make sure you do not put it into quotes because it is a number not a string you can put a number in quotes for a string. In fact, you have to. So if you're using a string that happens to be a number, like say uh, social security number or whatever, uh, if it's meant to be a number that isn't going to be manipulated and you're storing it in a string, then you would have to put into quotes. So it's a number that's going to be mathematically calculated. So no, it does not need to be in quotes. In fact, it would give you an error if you put it into quotes in this instance. So we now have a new variable. So we already have an area that checks to see if it's correct. So in the update section of game flow, we already have if player clicked yes. So click yes occurs when you click on one of the objects, one of the three choice objects. And we already checked to see if the name of the object you're clicking on matches the name from the corresponding designated correct selection. Okay, so we already have this section carved out saying this is what to do when it's correct. So that means you just need to put that variable in here. So the new variable total score plus equals and we'll say one. Now what this means is take the total score, whatever it's equal to, and add one so it's kind of odd the way um the way it's written versus what it actually means but that's what it means and this could be whatever like this could actually be a also a variable that way um rather than having a set amount it increases uh maybe you give extra points for if you have certain amount consecutive right so you could actually make this a variable as well. So you're increasing your score not by a fixed amount, but by a variable. OK, so we save that. We now have our variable. It now increases every time you're right. For now, let's just put the score down here. Some people like a final total screen. We can always do that later. So game object, create empty. Let's call this score text. Add mesh, text mesh. Let's put test in here so we can see where it is, or text, whatever. Character size, again, we have to shrink it to like 0.2. Font size, I think we've been using like a 38. Choose your font. Now, this is going to be a little bit different because, as we mentioned, Depending on the size of this depends, uh, well, not just, well, depending on the size of this depends on its position, but the anchor also decides, is it pushing off to the right? Is it pushing off to the left? Is it pushing in both directions? Well, typically, if this is going to be a score and you're going to actually have the word score, you really want the word score to be the anchor and have the number push off to the right. So in this case, the anchor being upper left is fine. We don't have to change it this time. Now we could put the word score here, but it's completely and utterly unnecessary because we're going to modify this by script. And we're going to do it just like we did with the correct message down here by linking it to the GM object. So again, in game flow, public transform. And we'll call this score. Well, I already, already used the word score text. So we'll call it score text OBJ again. I like to put that suffix on it to just so I remember that it's an object when it's giving me the suggestions in that pop up uh, menu. 
So when I save it, it will appear over here. Take the new score text object, put it there. And just as we have system text object, we can do score text object dot get component because we're getting a component. Which component? The text mesh component. Okay, what, what attribute of it? Well, the text attribute. And now this is going to be a little bit different because in this case, it's going to be a constant, but it's also going to have a variable. So the word score, and then we'll put in a colon. And then a plus sign. Now, I find this a little bit odd because if you're familiar with co coding, an ampersand is often used when you're doing what's known as concatenating. And that is you're taking multiple strings and lining them up. Like, say, you have a first name field, a last name field, and you want to turn it into a single first and last name, you would have an ampersand between them. For whatever, Unity uses a plus sign. So even though you're not adding per se, per se you're really concatenating. For some reason, it wants a plus sign. And now we just drop in that new variable. So this object is going to have its text mesh, text value, changed to a combination of the word score plus the variable total score. Now, it will start off not showing anything at all. Well, actually, it will start off showing... Well, I suppose we can get around this by doing this. We'll do score with a zero. Because what's happening is, if you notice, this doesn't get changed until you've actually clicked on a correct answer. So if you don't put anything down here by default, it would be blank until you click. Sorry, not sure I saved. Okay, I did. So cupcake. There you go. Next. Safe. Let's click on the wrong one. Incorrect does not increase. Okay, looks like I had to click on next a couple times. I'll have to double check to see if there's something wrong or if it's just coincidence. So now we click on uh, cake, score does, and that does change. Next, okay, that was fine. And cactus, score is three, next salt. Next, safe, let's click on the wrong one, incorrect. Okay, so looks I'll have to put the code for the incorrect so that doesn't clear when it's incorrect. And I think I'll save that for the next video because this one has already uh, gone on for a bit. But yeah, so we made good progress. We now have a score. Uh, we now reset the text mesh at the bottom. And uh, I think that's about it. So. Like I said, for now, we added the score here, but I'm thinking that maybe we'll add like a final uh, completion screen that says, congratulations, here's your score. It'd be easy enough just to create another scene, but um, I might just leave it like this uh, and see what else you guys would like to see. Uh, all right, so that should do it for now.